the goal of the eWASM project is to replace the EVM, which is the Ethereum virtual machine, with um, a newer, better, faster, sexier execution engine called eWASM, which stands for uh, Ethereum Flavored WebAssembly. A little more specifically than that, I'm working on today some tools for kind of backwards compatibility. So the switch to eWASM is in the main Ethereum roadmap. In particular, uh, it will be the execution engine for sharding when sharding comes online. And when that sort of changeover happens, we probably want to still be able to support legacy EVM bytecode, so all contracts that were deployed up to that point. So we're working on some tooling around that right now. So the next major milestone for eWASM is uh, basically a more stable testnet. We, we got a very basic uh, sort of private testnet up and running earlier this year already. Um, mid year is sort of our target. We'd like to have a hopefully a public testnet running where uh, any member of the community can basically write a contract in uh, a number of languages. So that's one of the most exciting parts about the eWASM initiative, right, is that you can write in, uh, in a language like C or Rust and compile that down to, to eWASM. A few months ago, I had the realization that the two most important things in Ethereum today, um, you could call them crises or issues or questions, right, are scaling and governance, okay? Scaling is getting a ton of attention for, for, for good reason. It's, it's, it's absolutely critical. We have amazing teams working on great ideas and many of them have been presenting here. Governance hasn't gotten as much attention. I think there's a few reasons for that. I think it just doesn't come as naturally to kind of the, the engineer type persona that is, has been very active in Ethereum up to this point, but it's become more and more important. And uh, we have an initiative now that we started a few days ago with this EIP0 governance kind of summit that, that we kicked off um, here in Toronto a few days ago. Uh, it looks like that's going to turn into an ongoing conversation via monthly phone calls, something like that. And so we've sort of got a call out to the community to please participate in this. And I think in the next six months, um, we should be able to make this a regular initiative and really begin putting in place a solid, sustainable governance system for Ethereum, whatever that is. I don't claim to have answers, but we're starting with very simple things like what are our shared values. So, so FEM, Fellowship of Ethereum Magicians, is uh, modeled after sort of engineering task forces, things like the IETF. So it's to bring together great engineering minds in Ethereum to address technical challenges. But then maybe we need a separate forum to discuss what we're calling the philosophical side of governance, right? So that's, as I said, the economic questions, the ethical questions, the legal questions. And I think I can probably speak safely on behalf of a lot of people in the Ethereum community when I say that we want to build something better and something different than the governments that we're all sort of, you know, uh, for better or for worse, um, subject to in the real world. Governance is a topic that has uh, become more popular and not just in the blockchain world lately so you know NGOs are playing a bigger role and corporations have governance um, and it's it's a lot less formal it's a lot more focused on things like networks and sort of um, emergent kind of properties of systems um, than it is sort of this top-down fixed kind of hierarchical idea so one of the hard things about the blockchain and about ethereum is that it's extremely multidisciplinary Right? You can't approach it with a single lens and really understand it. Just, just understanding the computer science or the game theory or the economics uh, is not enough, frankly. And I think all of us are a little overwhelmed. I certainly feel overwhelmed. You know, I, I understand computer science quite well. I have no legal background. At the moment, the way Ethereum governance works is the core developers are responsible for responding to EIPs and implementing the code and deciding the path forward. I don't have the expertise to do that. And I think many of us feel that way. So again, we need to begin bringing in that outside expertise as things get more complicated. The thing about EdCon that excites me the most is really having so many great minds and so many people working on so many exciting projects in the same place at the same time. Literally 15 minutes ago before, uh, meeting with you guys here, I was out in the courtyard here, kind of you know during the break time between presentations, and uh, had two or three people that I planned to bring together to talk about uh, a data idea that I'm working on. There were two or three other people on the periphery there who kind of like stepped in and, and joined, and and you know we mentioned, um, hey, like I wonder what implications this has for Aragon. And five minutes later, Jorge from Aragon walked by, and we kind of pulled him into the conversation. I just think that. That's the magic of conferences like that, is having, you know, email is great and online hangouts are great, but really having all the people together in a place like this, the bandwidth is um, an order of magnitude greater than you get through other channels, and amazing things come out of it. Like, I think that that conversation could lead to something.